right, so today we're going to be talking about a couple of factors that affect the fluidity of cell membranes. So to understand the factors that affect the fluidity, we first have to understand the structure of a cell membrane. So a cell membrane is made up of lipid bilayers, which is just two layers of lipid molecules. Right here we can see that, and we refer to this as um, phospholipids. So we call this entire structure a phospholipid bilayer. And each phospholipid contains a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. So if we look more closely, this would be the head and this would be the tail. And since the head is hydrophilic, that means that it wants to interact with the aqueous solutions. Therefore, the heads face outward, which we can see here. And the tails are hydrophobic, so they don't want to interact with the aqueous solutions. Therefore, they point inward and face each other. And the lipid molecules are able to freely move around, so therefore the entire bilayer is, oh, sorry, <laughs> is um, not rigid and actually fluid. However, the fluidity can change based on the properties that we're going to go into. So the first property that we're going to talk about is the saturation of the lipid's hydrophobic tails, which are essentially hydrocarbon chains. Um, and saturation is dependent on the number of double bonds that are in a hydrocarbon chain. Um, and if there are double bonds, then the molecule is said to not have the maximum number of hydrogens that it possibly can. So here we have a double bond in comparison to a single bond, and we have two less hydrogens um, down in this space than in this molecule up here. Um, and the double bond then causes a kink in the molecule, so basically a bend. Um, which we not only see in this molecule down here, but we also see it over here in the actual tail of the phospholipid, um, so how this one bends. Um, and basically, these kinks or bends uh, cause the phospholipids in um, a bilayer to be farther apart from each other uh, in comparison to when they're completely saturated and then they're very closely packed, which we can see up here. Um, and the farther apart the phospholipids are from each other because of these kinks, um, then the intermolecular forces, particularly van der Waals forces, um, are weakened and then the membrane is much more fluid. But if they're really closely packed um, because the tails are saturated, then the fluidity of the membrane just decreases. Yeah, so moving on to the second property, um, we're going to talk about the length of the lipid tails. So the tails are hydrophobic, which we said, um, making them nonpolar. And because they're nonpolar, that means that the main force between them are the London dispersion forces. And the more London dispersion forces um, that are in the tail means that they just want to stick together more. And this makes the entire bilayer overall less fluid than it would be if there were less London dispersion forces. So overall, the shorter the chain means the less London dispersion forces seen, and um, that means that the bilayer would be more fluid, while um, the more London dispersion forces, which means the longer the tail, um, that means they want to stick together more, making the bilayer less fluid. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> that's all we have. All right.